Over the last 10 years, I've visited airports on average of 120 days a year. I've convinced you to see the absolute best and worst of people at the airport. The demanding combination of schedules, disruptions, and um, unique qualities in people, especially parents with kids, um, make it a challenging experience. Expecting our first child, I began observing air parents at the airport. Commercial pilots receive 120 or 1,200 hours of training before they entrust it with passenger lives. Prior to our first child, more like, I read one book, more like skim one book, getting ready for it. Hoping my DNA would take over, I learned quickly genetics were not enough. I needed to find some more resources. I went into this parenting thing thinking, my kids won't cry. I sat next to screaming so loud I thought the windows would shatter. Turns out, my parents do cry, sometimes a lot. And reasoning with a two-year-old is not taught in sales management. I'm still trying to figure out how to use noise-canceling headphones at home. I'm not a parenting expert. I'm just a motivated dad trying to figure it out. I learned vicariously through others, so seeing parents and kids at airports is a perfect combination for me. My goal is to teach my kids to respect others, be polite, and be kind, and be known as a great kid. When the kid behind me is kicking my seat the entire flight, I often wonder what those parents' goals are. There's an invisible line on a plane regarding personal space starting with who controls the armrest. If the armrest is down and your arm is on it, it's yours. Personal space is finite, unsustainable resource. Our car is plenty wide for two kids, yet we can't go two blocks without one touching the other. I take the airline approach, hands in, look forward, be quiet. <laughs> Things change and not always for the best. When I'm traveling, I flex, I adjust. There's always different ways to do things. Just because mommy lets you do it one way doesn't mean it's the only way to do it. If my flight is canceled, I adjust. If I cancel a play date, it's the end of the world. I want my kids to learn from their failures and to continue experiment with new ideas. I love Purell. I'd bathe in it if I could. I get tense at the first cough near me. My throat gets scratchy if I hear a sneeze. Yet I don't always believe my kids when they say they have a cold or a scratchy throat. Do they try to get out of something? Then try not to eat their vegetables? You can call me inconsistent, but I'm consistently inconsistent. Unfortunately, airplanes do not wait for you if you're having a bad day, or unorganized, or simply screwed up. Schedules are priority. At home, we try to be consistent, but I've never had so many variables at bedtime. I'm tired. I need to tell you something. I miss mommy. Are all lions conspiring against my schedule? Security, loading a plane, baggage claim, renting a car, I stand in a lot of lines. Waiting your turn never gets easier. The minutes tick by as my blood pressure goes up because someone in front of me is slowing me down. And that's when I remember I've taught my daughters to be patient, kind, and use grace. My blood pressure goes down as I realize I just began to parent on myself. I like to eat like I don't know where my next meal is going to be. You can legally be on the tarmac for three hours, so I'm prepared for five hours of stomach fullness. My daughter can eat a full meal and be starving ten minutes later. Nothing sounds good. We're not listening to her words. It's not fair. I often feel the same way on an airplane. <laughs> a constant conundrum for me when traveling is whether to stay out for another round with the team or get up early and get some exercise. I want my kids to be healthy and active. Life is full of choices. What's better for dessert, a walk to the pickle barrel or a slice of apple? But the real motivation for me is I have a, get a little exercise so I can have a few beers each night. When the system breaks down, everything gets jammed up, and we get stressed. To a horror of his high school class, I once saw a teacher lead a 60 students to the San Francisco airport using a bullhorn to shout instructions. I sometimes fantasize about this technique at home. <laughs> when my message is not going to cross, I use my inside voice and try to get to the point. There are times in life when things don't go your way, weather, mechanical breakdowns, random cancellations, all conspire to make your life harder. Even the gate agent controls your destiny. I want to yell, you're not the boss of me, but technically, she is the boss of me. <laughs> now I know how my daughters feel. <laughs> Even when the gate agent is boss, I try to be kind. I find you can get much farther with kindness than you can shouting, and I think my girls are finding the same thing. As friendly as being bumped involuntarily sounds, it's not really that friendly. I sometimes involuntarily bump my kids from what they want to do, and they're still learning how to roll with the punches. How do you decide what's too dangerous for a kid? Jumping from a swing set, hanging upside down, monkey bars, ongoing bumps and scrapes, they don't bother me. What really scares me is escalators, moving sidewalks, and baggage claims. Those things are finger and toe-eating monsters. I want my kids to take risks, 
be adventurous, have fun, but never get hurt. There's an illusion of control when you travel and parenting kids. <laughs> I feel like I'm in control, but airlines seemingly make random changes. Similar to my kids telling me what they want me to hear, but doing something completely different. My goals are to give them enough rope to make decisions and have success. I find if I keep the reins too tight, they just get wrapped around me. Security checkpoint ahead. I'm ready to go, 15 seconds, belt off, pockets empty. Same system, same variables every time. I apply the same logic with a nine-year-old getting ready for school. It's not our first rodeo. We know start time, where to go, what to bring. Yet the last 15 minutes every morning turn into chaos. There are many bad things in the world, even worse than airplane food and sitting last row, middle seat. But the good absolutely outweigh the bad. Away from Bozeman for a third of my year, I appreciate coming home to this magical place to raise children. Looking around this valley, I'm thankful my family is here and not on a concourse out there somewhere. My parents created an environment of love and appreciation of the outdoors. I find myself conveying the same values with my kids. I was warned that kids would change our lives and grow up too fast. In a blink of an eye, the girls are now nine and five. My journey from awestruck newbie to experienced but somewhat confused dad has been energizing. This is the baby who started fourth grade last week. You know, it always takes two days to recover from one day of travel. I try to spend two quality days parenting for every day I'm away, laughing, loving, and being there for them. I want to continue learning as a parent, and I look to the airport for inspiration. But as I travel a little less in my new role, I find myself taking parental cues from more native parent-watching places, like soccer fields, grocery stores, and trailheads around Bozeman. Thank you very much.